Hi, my name is Sean Yu, and today I'll be discussing my review paper on substance use disorder treatment and the homeless population. To provide an overview, 60% of homeless individuals reported moderate or high-risk substance use, making substance use in the homeless population an important issue. In our study, we use a broad definition of homelessness and substance use to allow us to review a wide variety of studies. During substance use, there is dopamine release in the brain, which leads to pleasure. And over time, a decrease in the number of dopamine receptors prolongs drug use and decreases self-regulation that prevents drug use, which ultimately leads to addiction. There are many types of treatment for addiction. And treatment classes include full agonists, partial agonists, inverse agonists, and antagonists. However, there's also many barriers to treatment. First of all, there are limited FDA-approved pharmacotherapies, which are pharmacological treatments for substance use disorders. This results in a limited variety of treatment options, for homeless individuals who are seeking treatment. Additionally, homeless individuals experience financial barriers with being unable to afford treatment and geographical barriers, including limited access to treatment centers. These factors combine to form significant treatment barriers that prevent homeless individuals from seeking support for their substance use. Thus, our study's aim is to determine which types of pharmacotherapies and pharmacotherapy classes are the most effective so we could provide criteria that could seek to be used to determine where further research on pharmacotherapies should progress towards. We explored three treatments including those for alcohol use, cannabis use, and cocaine use. For alcohol use, it is the most prevalent substance use in the homeless population, with 83.8% of homeless individuals reporting current at-risk drinking and 50% of individuals reporting recent drinking. Our study analyzed the reviewed the effectiveness of baclofen, gabapentin, naltrexone, and topiramate. We reviewed clinical studies that tested these drugs to determine their effects. For baclofen, there was a significant decrease in heavy drinking days, or HDD, and an increased percent days abstinent. For gabapentin, there was similarly a significant decrease in HDD and also increased PDA or percent days of abstinence. Now, Trexone was an opioid receptor antagonist, which didn't have any statistically significant differences. Topiramate also significantly decreased HDD and also alcohol craving. For cannabis use, there are unfortunately no FDA-approved pharmacotherapies, which connects the prior point that there are limited treatment options for homeless individuals experiencing substance use disorders. In the homeless population, 19% of individuals reported cannabis use. Our study analyzed the treatments AEF-0117, galantamine, Nabilone and Veronycline. For AEF-0117, there was a significant decrease in ratings on the cannabis use questionnaire. Galantamine was a cholinesterase inhibitor, while Nabilone was a cannabinoid agonist. Both of these treatments had no statistically significant effects or differences on outcomes. Veronycline, however, increased percent days abstinent or PDA and decreased cannabis use in participants. Lastly, for cocaine use, 
homeless individuals are around 2.55 times more likely to use cocaine, while 76% of them report using cocaine in their lifetime. Our study analyzed the effectiveness of citalopram, galantamine, listexamphetamine, and varonycline by looking at clinical trials which used these four novel drugs as treatment for individuals experiencing cocaine use. We found that citalopram was a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, while galantamine was a cholinesterase inhibitor. Both treatments had no statistically significant differences or effects. Listexamphetamine significantly reduced cocaine use days and money spent on cocaine, making it effective. Additionally, varonycline for cocaine use disorder significantly reduced withdrawal symptoms. After analyzing and collecting our results, we found how various factors contribute to treatment barriers in the homeless population that prevent homeless individuals from seeking treatment for substance use disorders. Thus, it's important to use criteria like these established from our study to continue developing suitable treatments for homeless individuals to ensure they have a wide variety of options when determining which drugs to use for their treatment. It's also important to implement comprehensive treatment programs including those that consider the biopsychosocial model and social determinants of health. This will help take into account the various lived experiences and different situations of homeless individuals potentially seeking treatment, allowing for personalized and more patient-centered care. Thank you for listening.